What is going on everyone? This is Eric coming at you from just outside of Hartford, Connecticut, and we are back with another trade breakdown. Today's will be the Roy Oswalt trade, which occurred on July 29th, 2010, so just over a decade ago at the time of recording. And this was an interesting trade. Uh, at that time, Oswalt was considered one of the better pitchers in the league, and he was on a struggling Astros team, while the Phillies, in turn, were still considered good. Remember, at this point, they're a year and a half removed from winning the 2008 World Series. So they, they had made the World Series in 2009 as well. So it made sense. The Phillies are a big market club, and Oswalt can always resign for money. You know, Philadelphia has money. Houston, on the other hand, at that point in time, always wanted the assets. So without further ado, we will jump into the video. Pretty straightforward. I was able to write much larger than I usually do. So the original trade, of course, was the Philadelphia Phillies receiving starting pitcher Roy Oswalt, while the Houston Astros received a trio of players in starting pitcher Jay Happ, shortstop Jonathan Villar, and outfielder Anthony Ghost. Now, the bottom two were both prospects, while Jay Happ, was a starting pitcher in the majors. Just want to specify that. Basically, uh, Jay Happ was going to re replace Oswalt in their rotation. So how did this turn out for the two teams? We'll start with the Phillies, just because they're the most straightforward. Oswalt, he had a solid one-half seasons for the Phillies. But during the 2011 season, so you know the second season, um, he ends up dealing with back injuries. And it kind of really tampered with him, and it messed him a little bit messed up his pitching performances so he ends up leaving after the 2011 season because the team didn't see the point and at that point the dynasty had been dismantled with injuries you know ryan howard got hurt but that's a story for another day now how did houston do so houston you know anthony ghost they end up immediately trading him to toronto so toronto had tried to get him in the roy halliday trade which will be another video. And Philadelphia was reluctant to trade him in that trade. So Toronto gets their guy in exchange for first baseman Brett Wallace. Now, Brett Wallace, he spent parts of four seasons in Houston, but most of the time, you know, he was in AAA for the team. So he didn't do all that much. Not the biggest name involved at any way, in any way, shape, or form. So um, jumping back up to... The original haul for Houston, we will go with Jay Happ, who he spends parts of two years in Houston, and he wasn't all that impressive. So he ends up getting traded in this blockbuster trade here. So again, Houston and Toronto end up trading with one another. For whatever reason, Houston and Toronto and Philly and Toronto Philly and Toronto and Philly and Houston, they all like trading with each other. That's still true today. But basically, the Astros would acquire outfielder Ben Francisco, pitcher Francisco Cord Cordero, pitcher Ashter Asher Wolcheski, relief pitcher Alec sorry man, relief pitcher David Rollins, starting pitcher Joe Musgrove, catcher Carlos Perez, and pitcher Alex Comer, Kevin Comer. I don't know why I keep saying Alex. Now, in return for those seven players, the Toronto Blue Jays would acquire. A trio of players and starting pitcher Jay Happ, relief pitcher Brandon Lyon, and relief pitcher David Carpenter. Now, we're going to discuss, of course, as always, Houston's players first. So, Ben Francisco, um, he didn't do too, too much for the team. He struggled. He only spends one month on the team, then he gets traded for cash considerations, you know. Rebuilding teams will do that. If the guy's not showing too much value, they're just going to dump him for cash. Uh, Fran Francisco Cordero... He gets released after really struggling. He had three blown saves and an ERA of 19.8. I had to I had to mention that. I couldn't not mention that. So he just completely got blown up. Uh, Wojcicki, he spends two and a half years in the minors for the team. And when he gets called up, he doesn't do that great, but he doesn't get too, too much of an opportunity. He ends up, le he ends up getting cut. Uh, Joe Musgrove, so he he spends one and a half years in the team, on Houston, I should say, plus another four seasons in their minor league system. He was decent, but after the 2017 World Series, in which, of course, we know Houston won, albeit controversially, 
he gets traded and as I wrote right here, this trade will be just, is already discussed in the Hunter Pence trade breakdown as he was traded for Garrett Cole, in part for Garrett Cole. So if you want to see more about that, definitely check out the Hunter Pence video. Um, now we have David Rollins. So he never plays in the majors for Houston. He ends up getting picked from them in the Rule 5 draft. So unfortunately, you know, that's just how it goes. Kevin Comer... He remained in Houston's minor league system for five seasons before walking. And Carlos Perez, he he was a minor leaguer for a little bit, and then he ends up getting traded. So he ends up getting traded alongside outfielder Nick Tropiano to the LA Angels in exchange for catcher Hank Conger. Um, interesting thing about Hank Conger, he was one of the first South Korean players to play in Major League Baseball. And he spent one season as Houston's backup catcher, but then he ends up getting shipped away for cash considerations. And last but not least, we have, from the original trade, Jonathan Villar. And um, Villar, straight up for Houston, was the best player they got in the original trade. He spends two and a half seasons in the majors for the team. And he was a good base dealer. But he kind of, he started off strong and then he struggled on offense. Which becomes a theme for him in his career. Um, he ends up getting traded... And he gets traded to Milwaukee straight up for a relief pitcher named Cy Sneed. And Sneed really hasn't made it, had enough time to make a, you know, impression in the majors. He was, they, he was promoted from the minors in mid-2019, so it's a little too soon to say anything about him. All in all, though, for Houston, not the most impressive haul by any way, shape, or form. Now, let's discuss Toronto, because they were involved heavily. And we'll start off with Anthony Ghost, of course. So he bounces between the AAA and Major League Baseball for two and a half seasons. And he's a good base stealing threat. But other than that, he's not amazing. He's one of those typical, you know, base stealing, defensive minded players. Um, he didn't pan out and he ends up getting traded to Detroit. We're not going to discuss that today. Now we get to this part. And Jay Happ, he spends two and a half seasons in Toronto. And he bounces around between starting pitching and the bullpen. Um, in 2013, he actually got hurt with a comebacker, it hit him, and I'm sure if you were watching baseball at that point, you remember that, because it was around a time when a couple other players got hit with comebackers. You know, basically they throw the pitch, and the pitch comes off the bat and hits him. So, you know how it is. It was a pretty scary moment. But he ends up getting traded as well. Again, we're not going to go into these trades, because they're, we only discuss the trades of the primary teams involved. Um, David Carpenter, so he's an interesting story. So Carpenter doesn't play much in a half season, and then he ends up getting traded. Now, I will discuss this trade, but not big time. So he gets traded alongside John Farrell, the manager, in exchange for just another minor league prospect that never really did anything. But it was interesting because... This was basically Toronto and Boston. They would have just done a straight-up manager John Farrell for the prospect trade. But Major League Baseball won't let you do that, which makes sense. I mean, you can thank the 70s for that. And they just basically said, okay, we're going to have to – you have to throw in a player. So they threw in Carpenter, not a big name. And, yeah, it's just a little interesting tidbit of information there. Whereas Brandon Lyon, the last player Toronto got, he was okay in a half season before leaving. Milwaukee got Jonathan Villar, and Villar, really, he was a good player for two and a half seasons in that organization um, before being traded, but he was basically a really good power threat at times and a really good base stealing threat at times, but he could never solidify himself a role. He kept either getting hurt or just, you know, he'd produce enough to get the starting second base job. And then the team would acquire a better second baseman when Villar was struggling, so he'd be demoted. And then he would take over third base, and then he'd get demoted, and they'd go to left field, and then he'd get demoted. You know, it was just a mess. Whereas the last team involved, of course, is the Los Angeles Angels. And Carlos Perez, he would serve as the team's backup catcher for two and a half seasons before leaving. Well, Nick Trapiano, he bounced between the majors and the minors for parts of five seasons. So that is the Roy Oswalt trade. So who really ends up winning the trade, according to War, of course? 
Well, that would be the Phillies, getting a 5.4 war out of one and a half seasons of Roy Oswalt. Cash not considered when I do the war, of course. Now, who gets second place? Milwaukee with a 4.5 out of Jonathan Villar. Third goes to the Toronto Blue Jays, who with a five, with a group of four players has a 3.3 war, specifically headlined by Anthony Ghost and Jay Happ. Uh, next gets next is the Angels, who Carlos Perez was a solid backup catcher for them, as I mentioned for two and a half years, and Trapiano hasn't been a slouch, you know, slouch either. And last but not least, the Astros actually got a negative 0.2 WAR, despite acquiring all these players that you see in orange. It's just you know that's what happens with rebuilding teams; they don't hit on everything. So unfortunately for them. They lose this trade, quote unquote, but they saved money. And again, they end up getting guys like Joe Musgrove, who helps them win the World Series. And then they end up trading Musgrove, of course, for Garrett Cole in the future, which is discussed in the previous Hunter Pence trade breakdown video. Again, I'm going to mention that. But, you know, a lot of these guys are no longer on the teams they were traded for or two. The only one that is is Cy Sneed, to my knowledge. I think Nick Trapiano might be as well. But it just goes to show you, you know, baseball is a fickle sport. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, definitely, like I'd mentioned, if you haven't seen it, check out the Hunter Pence trade breakdown. You'll be able to see the Joe Musgrove for Garrett Cole trade. But other than that, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day.